Not that I care, but this is, this right here is a bug bite. <laughs> and so is that. Now this right here is, I'm ovulating. <laughs> anyway. Oh gosh. Whatever. <laughs> okay. So you've been practicing for two weeks, the hunger skill. I'm looking at what you've done. You did a good job. You integrated protocol foods like this lettuce, tomato, chicken breast. Um, a couple things. That's the first week. This is the first week. Yeah. This is the second week. So you did a two full weeks as we suggested. First, was it worth it? Yes. Okay. Are you, were you starving all the time? No. Okay. So do you mind if I tell everybody what your weight is? No. Nope. So we're talking with Sally. She's five six and weighs you started at two hundred and fifty pounds two weeks ago. Two hundred and fifty one. Okay. So you've got uh, over a hundred pounds to lose. So that's significant. Overall, were you surprised at how little hunger you had? Yes. I couldn't believe it. I mean, there were some days where I didn't actually eat until like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So with this practice, did you learn that if you're not hungry, you really have to be on top of that hunger because it's easy for you to get hunger very quickly. Yes, I did. Okay. There's a learning curve to that process. And if you don't, um, if you get too hungry, you're prone to be thinking, I need some sugar and I need a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that happen? Yeah. yeah. Can I, can I give you what, what I would assume that is? I mean, is yeah. your leptin level levels finally, finally come down to where they're inadequate to release fuel from your fat your blood glucose, because you have over 100 pounds of extra weight, your body's having to, to, to mobilize, basically, to move around against gravity, your demand for fuel is quite, quite a bit higher than mine. I'm 5'9"-ish and about 155 pounds. So you could look at me and go, oh, you have a higher metabolism. Oh, no, I don't. You have a higher metabolism. So when my blood, when my blood leptin levels go down and my body's having to start tap into that glucose that's floating into the blood, if you compare your demand for that glucose to my demand for blood glucose, whose blood glucose is going to drop faster? Mine. You got it. Because there's much higher demand. So who gets hungrier faster? I do. You got it. I'm hungry more often during the day. I'm hungry when I wake up. Sometimes, depending on my ovul my menstrual cycle, and it takes more food for me to feel satiated. Where you're not hungry very often, but man, when you get hungry, it's going to be a lot faster. Yes, and I learned that with the practice that I could tell that I better have something ready because once I go below that three point five, whoa, it's like get out of my way. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> So you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, having those crackers that on the very low calorie protocol, I those are what I call only in emergency situations because you don't need so much the the leptin influence of those crackers as you need the available glucose because mm -hmm. it's easier to digest, faster to digest. So if you get that hungry on this very low calorie protocol, which could very well happen. You're going to need those crackers to start. Or you may find that maybe just the fruit is good enough. So having that wisdom of your body is a big deal. Um, overall, how was your energy during the practice? When you felt like you actually got this rhythm down, and you really figured that out, that the gray on the hunger side and the gray on the fullness side. Um, I can already tell that... I mean, I was sleeping better. I wasn't snoring. Um, I'd get up in the morning, wide awake, ready to go. It just wasn't, you know, no groggy, no, uh, I don't feel like getting up today. You're 44, mm -hmm. so um, are you surprised? The thing that I'm most surprised about is how truly, um, how do I say it, like, I wasn't hungry as near as much as I was eating. You know, like, 
to so, learn when I was really hungry, that was more surprising to me. Like, because I'd go through the day and thinking, oh, I'm cooking and I didn't taste while I was cooking and I made things for my kids and didn't eat and because I wasn't hungry and it felt like it was really actually very eye-opening and liberating because I'm like, you know what? I'm not hungry. I'm not going to eat. Does that it was huge for me. I know. You want to know why? <laughs> oh, sure. You're going to make me cry because <laughs> you'll never do another diet again. No. There is no way. I look back at all the things I've been through, and I'm like, this is such a joke. I feel like somebody gave me the secret code, and I figured it out. Do you understand? I know. And it's not rocket science, and Mm-mm. it's free. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I take that back. You paid for me. <laughs> but this isn't something you have to pay membership for. Right. You don't need to get something installed in your body to say, oh, you're hungry. Eat. It's really just taking the time to just listen and then just do what it says mm-hmm. and hold yourself accountable outside of that. Did you find that there were times you really wanted to eat and you knew you weren't hungry? Um, usually that. So like I said before, I knew my danger time was always right before dinner because I was hungry and cooking and then I would eat while I was cooking and then sit down and eat with the family. And You were probably too hungry. Yes, I was. I, and. Because you had said to me, did you ever think to just sit down and eat at that time? And I'm like, well, no, because I'm making dinner and I'm going to sit down with my family. And so I snack and then I make dinner and then I sit down and eat. And so there was definitely time there where I'd be cooking or, you know, getting ready for them to eat. And I'd be like, oh, my goodness, I so would normally be tasting here or doing this or that. And I'm like, I don't need to. I'm not hungry. So it was it was. Or you were hungry, but it wasn't so awful that you had to eat. Well, another thing, too, is, like, kind of noticing when my family wanted to eat, when they were hungry, and I didn't eat with them all the time. Mm-hmm. Did you know, because I wasn't, I didn't want to. I wasn't Did you hungry. find that it was still enjoyable just to make sure that you were with your family and sitting with them? Yeah. Yeah, so that's that some of really... our best times, you know, around the table. So Yeah, and so that's an important part of, of it. And if you're rationing, let's say we were in that type of environment where it was forced. This was a choice that you made to eat this way, even though there was no reason to ration. If You would still do that. You'd still make eating a priority for, if you could, make a time. If you're hungry, eat. If you're not, let's just sit as a family and be grateful right. for whatever food we have on the table. And then we're going to go out back and hunt <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that we're restocking. But amazing how... Your body is not flawed. Isn't no. that also just an exciting awakening? Yeah. That it's not flawed. Um, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's important that everybody hear this. The scientists who are in the lab researching leptin connection in the brain and the hypothalamus and how this works, they've assumed that the reason why you're 100 pounds or more overweight is because you are hungry and eating all the time. Are you, when you really assess hunger, are you hungry all the time? No. Is that why you ate? Is that why you, it's not, is no. it? So they're, they need to get out of the lab, don't they? Mm-hmm. They assume you have left them resistance in the hypothalamus, which is why you're hungry all the time. Because they assume that that's the only way you can gain fat. It's like these smarty, smarty pants people in the lab don't talk to real people. Yeah. You are not hungry. No. You realize I've never met in the 15 years I have been helping and assisting people in weight loss. I've never met someone who is morbidly obese and hungry. Oh. Not one. I believe it. I know. I wasn't hungry. So all the research when I was studying this stuff, and they kept on saying, well, they are overeating, so they must have something faulty going on in this part. Not to say that you don't have some dysfunction, leptin resistance, and other organs. It's just not with your hunger. I I, I don't believe it. Anyways, so how do you feel about starting the protocol now? Because all it's going to do is speed up the process for you. Because you could continue to lose if you just did this for the rest of your life. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. So now we're just going to like, okay, now let's just get this fast and done and over with. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other thing is this awareness 
and what you exposed yourself to, how do you feel? Did, w did that reduce your stress for after the protocol? You know, a lot of times people freak out, first of all, because they think they feel so good because of the HCG, which is not the case. You know you feel good without it. But then they think it's the HCG that protects them from gaining or fixed them, which it isn't. And then they freak out that they're gonna, their body's going to just gain when it's over. Because of this practice, would you agree that your confidence level, your overall foundation of confidence in your body just went up big time? It did. It did. I, that isn't even a blip on my radar screen. I'm not even worried about that. I know. So. <laughs> I know. I recommend everybody practice for at least two weeks and hold yourself accountable to that hunger skill because you need to get exposed to your own body's capacity. You just have to sit back and listen to it. Anything, um, any concerns? No, I really, I'm excited to get started. And I think this practice was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. So I know we tell this to everybody and were, were you not a little like, crap, I want to start now. Oh, I almost called you because I know I had two weeks of practice and I was like, it's Tuesday. I should call her and say, I'm ready after one week. I'm happy <laughs> like, to do that. I was this close, but do I'm you, like, no, I'm going to stick it out. Do you agree the second week was probably the best week for you? Because the first week, there's all that learning. There's like, oh my God, I'm getting too fast. What works? And yeah. then the second week, you actually get to put it in and consistently practice it. Yeah. Um, Is the scale in here? I don't see it. Okay. I'm going to go get the scale. Hold on a second. All right. Because I, what, you haven't weighed yourself, right? No. Oh, I can't wait to find that out. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I told you not to do this um, to lose weight. It wasn't about losing weight, was it? No. It was about you just trusting and focusing on hormones, right? Go ahead and stand on it. So you lost 10 pounds in two weeks just focusing on hunger. Mm -hmm. You knew that, right? I could tell my clothes were fitting differently. And I feel like you didn't really diet. I mean, I really... Because I tell everybody, eat what the heck you want. No judgment. You had pizza, potato with butter and cream, cheese. You did do protein shakes, bowl of Cheerios, oatmeal, blueberries, tacos, um, nachos, ice cream. You did everything I asked you to do. <laughs> I see this all the time. So yeah, so you didn't even try. There was no attempt. It wasn't even the motive. And isn't that just kind of a bonus? It is. So the other thing that this practice exposed you to is letting go of the scale. Wasn't it nice not to be seeing that every day and using that as motivation to do what we just did? I didn't even think about it. And and because I read too, you know, to use your clothes as the judge, like to see how your clothes are fitting. And mm -hmm. after the first three days, I was already like, oh my goodness, like I feel a difference in my clothes. Okay. And so, I mean, I'm... I really didn't know what that was going to say, but <laughs> I knew something had changed because of the way my clothes were fitting. Yeah. Well, let's get started. All right. Thanks for sharing.